believer. And this morning, I just want to talk to you about something that all of us are always endeavoring to hear. Isn't it good to hear, I mean, nice things all the time, the good news? We are always eager to hear the good news. So the Bible itself is the good news. The gospel is the good news of God. So I'm delivering the good news from the Lord. Um, I'm, talking, I'm talking about the promises. Promises. Say promises. Promises. So, talking about promises, um, you, you know, um, I always think about my father. My own father is late now. He was late long, long back. So my father, when I was young, I used to iron my father's uniforms before he went to work. And he, he always said to me, he promised me anyway. He said, it was a promise. He promised that he was going to buy me a car when I, when I get older. And I, I, I didn't want a car then, obviously. I didn't want a car then. But then, because he said he was going to buy me a car, I was looking forward to that promise. I kept on anticipating that when I grow older, I'm covered. I might need a house and a wife yes. and, and other things, but not a car. A car is already covered. So it was a promise that I held on to. You see? So every time when you make promises, be careful. Do you see what happened to this? Poor young little boy. The dad promised a car, and the died. The dad died uh, a few years later, and there was no car. But the, the, the this poor young boy kept holding on the promise of a car, and 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 can you just imagine that the, the man is gone, yeah. and the car is not come yet, but. One thing that I learned over the years is that even though my dad promised me a car and he died before giving me the car or buying the car for me, the promise was fulfilled. Mm. It didn't matter how, but yeah. the promise was fulfilled. So every time when you hold on promises, don't fix it or don't fix your eyes to where you were expecting the promise to come from. Because God works in many ways. See, God works in many ways. Um, I mean, part of my job is to, is to talk to people and just to give them reassurance. So I come across this young lady girl, and she's been diagnosed with a, a, a condition which I'm not familiar with. I'm not medically trained, but I think it's something to do with she was born without a womb. So sad news to this young girl, and she, she's got to learn that she's going to live a life without a child. She wants. She always wanted a family, but then she she's um, she's just got this news now. She's got to live with what she's been told. She's been diagnosed that she's not going to have any children, no family. Then I'm saying to her, sometimes when I do my job, I, I tend to be very aware that I, I'm a preacher. Sometimes uh, uh, that that kind of subconsciousness that I, I don't want to end up preaching. But I say to her, you know that if you ever wanted to have children, you are going to have children. If yeah. it is your desire that you have children, yeah. you are going to have children. The only problem is, I didn't say this to you here, but I, I'm saying this to you now. The only problem is, if she would grow with the anticipation that um, that man said I'm going to have children, despite me not having a home. So how ridiculous is that? Let me wait and see. The expectations, if she fixes her eyes on what that man said, and as she grows and begins to wonder what that man was talking about, that's a problem. Because God he has got many ways that, he's got, that he answers our problems. You can have a baby on your lap even without going into labor. Even without going into nine months of pregnancy. You can have a baby in your lap if you trust God. Because God is the provider and rewarder of those that diligently seek him. God provides in many ways. I've got a car, but my father didn't buy a car. To me, because my father had a willing heart for me to have a car, because of me being diligent and working wholeheartedly, I've got a car now. It is through my father's prayers that I've got a car. So you can get your own child. You can carry your own child without going through labor, without going through nine months of pregnancy. Amen. Amen. So, I am talking about promises. It's a very tricky situation because when God promises you something, God fulfills. Amen. God is not like man. That man can promise you and say, um, let's meet tomorrow at 2 p.m. at Nando's and doesn't show up or shows up two hours later. But God is honest. 
When God says, I'm going to show up, he's going to show up. God said to Moses, I will show up, and he showed up, and that was disaster. That was chaos, because they never expected what they encountered. Because they wanted to see God. Moses said, let me meet you. And when God showed up, it was disaster. So every time, as I'm telling the life to myself, when I pray and say, God, we want your presence, come, we want to meet you. And then I can imagine if God will come down here. <laughs> Have you ever thought about it? Disaster. We always invite God's presence, not God in his physical form. Whatever form God is, but always invite God to come, his presence to come and be with, with us. So I'm talking briefly about the promises of God. They are yes and amen because they always come to pass. Whatever promise God promised you. Do you know when God promises you, promises you something? He does it because he realizes a need. God first identifies a need in your life, then he promises. Then he gives you a promise that I will give you this. I will supply all your needs. I will answer to your prayers. Most of us here, probably it's just me, we are here sitting down um, waiting for the promise of God since we were born. Most of us here have prayers that have not been answered. You've been praying for years and years and God is yet to answer your prayer. That's the mentality that I love. God is yet to answer my prayer. Amen. Not God, yes, not. God is yet to answer. Amen. Because God is still at work. Amen. God is not knocked off. He's not finished. He's at work in heaven. He's at work under the sun. He is still doing something. It's funny that he's taking time. He is taking his own time. It's not your business. It's his business for him to facilitate, to suit, to impress, to put in place what belongs to you in you. So he's taking his time. I know it's not easy. It makes me be so worried sometimes. You wait for longer. Maybe it's a financial problem. You're waiting for finances. I want to tell my wife that, you know what? I know um, I'm not saying this to her because I don't want her to leave me. I want to tell her that, you know, I'm going to have a lot of money. <laughs> I, I tell her sometimes that, you know, I, I, I have it in me. I, I, I'm going to have a lot of money. Maybe you have a money issue that you have prayed to God and say, God, I need money, I need finances, I need a breakthrough. And God is here to break through in your life. Wait. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. Underline wait. 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 <laughs> you know this waiting thing, waiting business. Um, <laughs> men, you know when men when propose love to, to yeah, young men, have a nice, you know when you propose love to these young girls? Most times, they, I mean, it happens to most of us who are married now. We've been married for years and years. You know, a woman tells you that I'm thinking. I'm thinking. <laughs> you know, when a girl tells you that she is thinking, it doesn't necessarily matter. I mean, mean that she is thinking. She knows the answer. She knows that whether it's a yes or no. When she says she's thinking, she wants to test your patience. Are you for real? Are you for real? So. <laughs> I mean, every time, when we, when we propose love, when we propose love, and they told us that they were thinking, we knew that they know the answer. But we have to go through a process of building your patience so that they see the seriousness in you, which is the reason why uh, some men have lost their beloved sweethearts because they couldn't wait. They wanted shortcuts. They went somewhere else and said, I can't wait longer. Let me go, let me go for the order. You know when you go and waiting for a bus, and the bus is not turning up, and you think, I'll go to the next bus stop. And if oh, it's not turning up, I'll go to the next bus stop. Oh, it's still, well, I'll get you town walking. I might save my money. I'll go to the, the moment we're in between two bus stops. Do you know what happens normally? Yes, yes, you're right, you got it. You know, that, that what happens. So whenever you are waiting for God for something, don't move. Wait. Chill. 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 You are in the right place. You don't need to be in a 6,000, 10,000 seater church to hear God speak. You don't need to be in a church filled with people, white, green, black, yellow, cream, to feel the presence of God, for God to answer your prayers. You need to be here where the chairs behind you, Elizabeth, are empty. God is telling you something about them. Yeah. Be here until God fulfills his promises. Yeah. He says in 
Psalm chapter 145, verse 13. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy. Uh, I like this. This doesn't reflect anything to do with me. Trustworthiness. I'm not there. I'm not there. Trust me. In all, I know it's me. It is me again. In all he promises. And your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises. And faithful in all he does. Amen. Faithful in what he does. This is my God. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. All of us know this one. We have to be familiar with this one. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. These are God's plans. God's plans for you is to have a future. So if you are living in fear, because you, have, you are going through certain experiences, or you are poorly, or you have a diagnosis, or there is something that is coming on the way every time is hindering you from progression. Every time you think, I'm still young, I've got this diagnosis, I'm not going to live longer. Remember, God, not GP. God, yes. not the surgeon. God, Amen. not your doctor. God, Amen. not your enemy. You know, sometimes your enemy defines your future yeah. and tells you that, you know what? It's not going to be longer. I'm telling you, it's not going to be longer. That's why enemies can tell you sometimes. But God, the maker, the author, and the finisher, and the perfecter of your faith, says, God says, I know the plans. Not your plans, his plans yeah. about you. You are part of God's plans. Yeah. In, in um, Hebrews, you know, it's in Romans 8, 28, God says, um, Romans 8, verse 28, you know, sometimes scripture runs away from you. He said, um, for it is, for it is, Oh dear God, it's, it's gone because I didn't have, I didn't plan to say this. But in Romans 8, verse 28, God talks about the plans that He has for us. That if you are in His plan, if you are in His plan, you will prosper. If you are in for all things work for good to all that eyes come back now. Come on, Holy Spirit, take, do your business. For all things work for good to all that trust Him. Yeah. All those that are called according to His purpose. Yes. You are God's purpose. You have no exception. The Bible says Elijah was a man like you. Yes. You know what? When he says like you, that means he was a liar like you. He could lie like you. He could doze in church like you. He could not believe like you sometimes. He could not fast when others were fasting like you. He could tell a lie like you. But he prayed yes. that there'd be no rain in three years and there wasn't rain. But the Bible says, he was a man like you. So, as you are, you don't need to be perfect enough for God to fulfill his promises in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We, we, we do miss some of God's promises because we like to take shortcuts. <coughs> Say shortcuts. shortcuts. If we take shortcuts, then we miss God's promises. If God promises that, I said earlier, that we need to be where he has placed or situated us. If we, we can't wait, they that wait, he gives them strength. Amen. Because you need strength to wait. You know, if you've been um, 20 years residing, I mean, being, living in the street for 20 years, and God has promised you that you will have your house. You know how painful, how miserable, how, how, how it is like, how it feels like to be on the street for 20 years without a house. Even when God has promised you, you need strength to go through this. Amen. You know when people are calling you names, when people are saying it's not going to happen, let's see what's going to happen. You know when people are disregarding you, you know when you are starting something or a small business and people are saying nothing is happening. You know when you are doing something and you feel yourself, you do feel that this is not going anywhere. You know how it feels. But God says, I know the plans I have for you. And that's a promise. 
God is going to fulfill his promises. Um, in Genesis chapter 17 verse 8, you know when God was promising Abraham, God promised Abraham that he's going to have loads, loads and loads of children, loads and loads, multiple a promise. But now there is a promise that Abraham couldn't stand up with, couldn't hold fast on. God promised Abraham that he was going to have a son, but Abraham couldn't wait longer. You know when you are told that you're going to have a son? I can't imagine. When you are told that you're going to have a son, it is taking longer, longer, and longer. And Abraham thought, I, I've got to find a way. I've got to find a way. I need a son. Like yesterday, then Abraham, Abraham took a shortcut and he had what he wanted. Not what God wanted. So if you take a shortcut, if we take shortcuts in everything that we do, we end up having all we wanted. Not what God had wanted. You should be where God had wanted you to be for God to bless you. Not where you want to be for God to bless you. God wants you to be where he wants you to be. Amen. So Abraham managed to get something from what God had promised him. He had all the promises, but he couldn't wait. So he made shortcuts. You read at home, you know how he did that. He made shortcuts and eventually he had a son. But it was not God's divine, divine, yeah. anointed, yeah. Yes. perfect will. It was Abraham's way of making. So you know, things take longer sometimes to show up, isn't it? I can imagine. I, 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 I don't know much about the experience of being pregnant, although I look like I'm pregnant. But the thing is, if Imagine nine months a woman carries a baby. Nine months. And most women will tell us that some of you men can't carry a baby for three weeks. You can't. Because men, we, we tend to be weak in some aspects, in some things, in some way of waking. And women think that you can't carry a baby for nine months. Three weeks, you're mourning, you're already yearning, whinging. So for nine months, a woman will wait for the child right time to come. Nine months. There is no shortcut in that. You have to wait for nine months for the baby to be born. You can't go to the hospital and say, I'm six weeks pregnant. I need my baby now. I'm sorry, I can't wait. Can I have my baby now? No. You have to wait for nine months. It's natural. We have to go through that. So Abraham couldn't wait and only thought about himself, his desires. He didn't think about why God had purpose that he was going to give him a son. And that son was perpetually and perfectly meant to fulfill certain aspects of God's plan and God's mission. Therefore, then respect what God is promising you. Because when God is promising you something, he's promising you something with his intentions, with his divine plan in it, is going to meet God's expectations. Not your own expectations. So shortcuts are always going to get you to where you are going, but in the wrong way. Amen. It doesn't necessarily mean that if you take shortcuts, you won't get to Costco. You won't get to Costco. But you will find me there. Because I use the set nerve. I use what God wants me to use. It's always advisable if you want to wait from God. Wait until God says, go. Amen. God knows exactly what you need. He knows what you want. He knows what you need, what is important in your life. He knows what you want, what makes you happy. What you need, which is important in your life, and what you want, which makes you happy. God's mission focuses on things that you need. What is specifically important for you to have in life? For things that you want, God gives you the strength to be able to be initiative, to be creative, and make yeah. yourself happy. God is not going to come and make you happy. You make yourself happy. Yeah. David says, I was glad when they say to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. It was glad, but some people are not happy at all coming to the house of God. You have to fight. You have to fight for people to wake up in the morning and come to church. We have to fight for people to dress up to come to church. But God said, but David said, I was happy. I was glad when they said, come, let us go to the house of God. So God knows how to meet your expectations, how to meet your needs. Nothing is as boring as someone who keeps asking you about the promise when you promise them. You know our kids, when you promise them, I'll give you this, I'll buy this for you. They always look at the door. 
Dad, how, how, how far with that PlayStation? Dad, how far, how far is that tomorrow? Dad, how far? And on, maybe it's for the birthday day. On the birthday day, they always come and remind you first thing in the morning. It's my birthday day today. How, how far with my gift? It's not the end of the day. But they, they always persist, isn't it? They always insist and tell to you that they want their birthday day. They want their promises. You don't need to always go to God and remind him about the promises. God knows about the promises. He's going to deliver at the right time. Everything is nice at the right time. Everything is sweet at the right time. Everything is nice when you go through a wedding. Everything is nice when you go through the ale. When every time is, everything is nice when you pay. Everything is nice when you go in the right way. If you do it outside wedlock, it's not nice. Stolen water tastes sweet, but every time you're drinking stolen water, you are not comfortable at all. Have you ever seen a thief? A thief don't show up at the shop with hands akimbo or in his pocket and say, what can I steal here? I'll get this, I'll get that. No. It's fidgeting. It's watching if anyone is looking, if anyone is seeing. It's unstable. A thief. But if you are coming to get what rightfully belongs to you, mm, you are yeah. comfortable. Yeah. You are happy. Mm. You are flexible because it rightfully belongs to you. So when God promises you something, don't try to find your own way of getting it. Wait. Wait. Go through the process. Go through the cooking. The children of Israel, they had a promise. God promised them that you will go to the promised land, a land filled with milk and honey. Did they find any honey there? Did they find any milk there? No. God promised them a land full of milk and honey. God wanted them to go and till the land. But the most important thing is, God took them to the promised land in 40 years. In what could have been 40 days. You know, geographically, from Egypt to Jerusalem, I'm not sure about the flight, but I think it's a 20 or 30 minutes flight. You can Google, I don't know. Walking can be 40 days, a month plus some days from Egypt to Tel Aviv. Yes, 40 days you are there walking with barefoot, just like this. But these guys, 40 years, not 40 weeks, not 40 months, 40 years. Why? Because God was worried about this guy's mentality. They wanted shortcuts. The Bible says there is a scripture. No, I put the scripture somewhere here about it. In um, Exodus, Exodus chapter 13, verses 17 and 18. Well, I'll read it. I'll read it just to be quick. When Pharaoh made the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, through that though that was shorter. God did not lead them through a shortcut. God hates shortcuts. Now we can see, God doesn't like shortcuts. For God said, if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by the desert road towards the Red Sea. The Israelites went up to out, out of Egypt ready for battle. So instead of 40 days walk, they went 40, 40 years. Because God purposely, purposely proposed for them to go the longest way. Because he knew that if they will go the shorter way, he will find it difficult to work with them when they are in their promised land because they won't listen. Their mentality was still full of Egypt. Most of them, if you read the Bible carefully, most of them always murmured to Moses and say, Moses, we were better in Egypt. 
Because in Egypt, there was grain, they would fry, they would be onion, tomatoes, who would eat nicely, healthy food. Look at this manna, everyday manna. No diet, we don't eat anything nice here. What's happening here? Nothing is happening. We need a church, we need a building of our own. And God is saying, this way, you people, this way, no money, this way, all the time is going, this way, oh, where is so and so, this way, a lot of things were happening. God said, the best way to deal with them is to take them the long way so that they would learn. And the children of Israel had 40 years, 40 years of learning, but all of them that were given the assignment did not learn at all and God killed them and the younger generation showed up yes. God has always a plan when God has promised you something double God has got a plan even if you die yes. God will stick with the plan yes. if God promised you something he will fulfill yes. even if you will leave change if God wants this lady to belong to us he will still fulfill yes. even if whatever happens if God has promised it's going to happen. We are just going through Moira, our Mount Moira. We are staying longer in this mountain because we are waiting for God to show up and bring to us what belongs to us. We have to learn to be patient. Amen. Amen. Sometimes when I, I um, it's not happening anymore anyway because I don't see this happening in this country. When I was growing up, when I was in Zimbabwe, there used to be queues when you, when you, when you go to the bank for your own money. You, you will queue for, for, some, for some hours or for some minutes. I used to think, I can't do this, I can't. I'll just, I'll just leave it, I'll, I'll come tomorrow. Do you know, I'll spend the whole week coming, coming, coming and coming and there will be queues. I was not patient at all. I'm still developing my patience. It's still as good, not as good as I would want it to be. But God is saying, be patient. Amen. If you're not patient, God is going to toss you around. You are going to go through pain. For what you are waiting for, God is going to cause a bit of pain, a bit of waiting, a bit of things showing up and you're thinking, oh, maybe that's it, maybe that's it, that's what I'm waiting for. No, it's not it. God is still saying, go, go, come on, keep going, keep going. If God has not shown up in your life, it's not done. Because God has made a promise and is going to stand on the promise until you put your hands on what God has promised you. Yes, yes. Let me close. What are you expecting from God? How long have you been waiting? How long? 40 years? You're not even 40. Oh, come on. This guy is 40 years. Kids were born, kids died. Things happened, things stopped happening. Mana came, mana stopped. 40 years, the wait is no longer. If God has promised, he's going to fulfill. Amen. What is it that you're waiting for? God promised that we are going to have a building of our own. Here we are. Amen. But we are not yet in the promise, mind you. We are not yet in the promise. We are in the deliverance. We are in a process whereby we can see it. Because Moses saw the promised land. I don't want you to not enter the promised land. I want you to enter the promised land. That's why Peter is saying, if you put your 2P, at least you have something to say in 40 years and say, I was part of this foundation. I was part of this exodus. I was part of this thing when it started. I put my brick here. I am one of the chief cornerstones of Redeemed Worship Center. I was there when we started. I put my money. I sold my car. I sold my house. I did A, I did B because God wants you to be an ambassador, to be the first here. Hallelujah! Yeah. Then God is going to release a lot of things. Yeah. Maybe your finances are being held back because God wants you to let go for his house. How is it possible that my house is in ruin, but your houses are flourishing, gleaming, shining? How is it like 
Then the house is twinkling. God is asking, come guys, let us build together. This is our promise. Let's put our fingers and our hands in this promise. This is for us to grab. This is for an opportunity for us that comes once in a lifetime. Let us hold fast to our promises. Let us hold unswervingly to this promise because it belongs to us. So whatever you're going through, if it's not finished, God is not done with you. Whatever God promised you, He is going to fulfill. God is honest with His promises. God will fulfill. Hallelujah. There's nothing more I can say. If you still got any questions, ask Him. I've done my bit. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you, Father, this afternoon because you have spoken through us, through me, O Lord, and you have spoken through all of us, O oh God, with your head where that's been held, which has been precise and clear. Lord, we thank you for the promises that we have for us. We know that, the God, there is still more to come. I pray that you give us the spirit to wait, to be able to be patient and wait until we show up, until we receive what's been graced for us, oh God, in Jesus' name. I pray for my brothers and my sisters here. I pray for a great deliverance. I pray for a good timing, oh Lord, that they know when you show up, that they know the time when you've come, that they know the time when to grab what belongs to them. God, teach us to wait. Teach us to wait that we may put our hands on the promises that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you.